Right. Alan Quinlan, good morning to you. Morning, lads. How are you? Uh, we, we was it was it Johnny who was giving you grief for like saying oh, you, you can't see a way that Ireland are, are going to be able to win? Then last week it was somebody. Uh, no, because he said I can't see them winning, but then he said I can see them winning. Yeah, and he was right. Turns out. <laughs> <laughs> well, right yeah, I had that feeling beforehand that it was going to be better. Um, having watched some of the trainings, sometimes it counts for nothing, you know. But body language, uh, sound bites, and press conferences, and. Probably the player and me thinking, yeah, they're going to respond here and do something a bit better, uh, fix the wrongs that they 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 had the week before. So I just had a feeling they'd be a lot better, and I was kind of going with the line that if they're in the second in the game in the second half, it's not kind of a, they're not down a big score. Um, a little bit of doubt may set into the, the New Zealand players and Ireland will grow in confidence, but they started the game magnificently, didn't they? Um. So you've analysed the game for us already on, on uh, Saturday. I'm very interested in the aftermath, and like so, after that, you probably got a chance to talk to some of them. What what were they saying? Because like, um, uh, Ty Byrne is in the papers today saying that uh, Paul O'Connell got the the locks together and was like, "You you all don't have a clue how big this is. You don't really fully understand what you've just done." Because he played nine times, I think, against the All Blacks and never got in, within a sniff, well, some sniffs of, of nearly winning. But like, he's like, "You've just done it twice. This is incredible." So. He's um he's the world's most enthusiastic man when things are going well. What was he like afterwards? Um, I think what I noticed, Jared, on pit side afterwards, they were very kind of um, obviously happy and ecstatic with the result, but there was lots of little whispers of um, it's all about next week now. It's all about next week. Uh, well, Johnny Sexton went and he was interviewed and he said it's all about Tuesday night. They've got to support the, the rest of the squad in, in the game against the Maoris, but I think they know deep down that um, there's going to be an aggressive reaction here and, you know, the public were going wild. Um, there was an air of shock around the place from the New Zealand fans who were at the stadium. Um, the press were shocked, the coaches, players. But the Irish team were pretty relaxed, I thought. Like, obviously, that's, that's, is, there, is there three guys who've won against New Zealand five times? Conor Murray? Uh, Keane Healy no not Keane Healy Conor Murray Johnny Sexton Tyg Furlong um, that's some CV isn't it five times you've played you've, you've won against New Zealand so um, they seem pretty relaxed but a lot of the focus was quickly kind of turning on and I like the way Farrell said um, we've got a we have a series to win now and we're going to try and win it like the, the easy thing here Ger, would be well Pat's on the back Fantastic! We've got that historic win, and does it really matter about next week? But I love the desire and the attitude of them. Um, it's going to be incredibly difficult because I think there's been uproar here in New Zealand, lots of pressure back and in Foster again. So it'll be interesting to see how Ireland deal with that pressure this week. Is there any um, sense, though, like of sort of anger in the Irish squad as well about just the physicality of New Zealand and like really wanted to do them do one over on them after the two tests? I think there was a bit of anger internally last week with some of the decisions that went against them in the first test. Um, that was um, mainly around their clean outs past the breakdown, Johnny. Um, they were tackling Irish players without the ball, mm. basically, as they went over the rocks. They got penalised for that this week on at least two or three occasions um, by Jaco Piper. So that suggests that Ireland highlighted this to the referees, um, uh, to Jaco Piper and his team of officials this week. So they watched out for it. You know, every team kind of does that in rugby, and it's usually kept behind closed doors, bar what happened with Rassi Erasmus last year. He went public with that. Um, but it happens after every game. New Zealand will be sending clips to Wayne Barnes and World Rugby this week that they're not happy with this, that and the other thing that Ireland did, trying to find ways to influence the referee. So um, it's kind of role reversal in, from one week to the second week. New Zealand's discipline was terrible. Um, it was really, you know, erratic. And I think... For them not to have learned, and because I think that would have been said back to them that there was some issues around their cleanouts. For them not to have learned that and to, to do the same stuff again in the second test, I think they'll get away with it. Was probably naive of them. Um, that's an area that they got to fix. Their their overall discipline was poor. Um, 
but I think for Ireland, again, Johnny, some of these players will have played. You know, it happened in Chicago, back to Dublin. It happened in, um, you know, the, the aggressive uh, reaction there back in that game a number of years ago. Um, we saw what happened at the World Cup after we beat them in, at the, in November in, eight, in 2018. What happened in the World Cup, their reaction. So um, they're going to be very, very physical on Saturday night. But I think this team, and uh, I was chatting to Donald Lennon about this, and we, like, we both came to this conclusion without getting carried away. Now, I have to be careful because, but like, it's an incredible achievement and they're a bloody good team. They're actually a, a strong, mentally uh, powerful side who can do, you were able to do this to respond from the week before in a, in a really hostile environment because the crowd were pretty nasty on Saturday night at the game as well. Um, and to bounce back from from what happened in Eden Park the week before and, and, and get a performance. But the interesting thing, how will they deal with next week? Um, the inevitable kind of aggressive reaction. I think, um, I hope they're ready for it. I think they'll know about it and um, they'll be trying to back themselves to play and uh, be accurate themselves again. Uh, talk to us about the, that crowd um, and just how nasty it got. There's some reports online of uh, Irish fans getting a bit of hassle. Yeah, I spoke to some fans afterwards. Um, there's a tour group here with Rugby Travel Ireland and uh, um, I met some of the supporters afterwards and, and was talking to them and they were they were kind of, they were a bit shocked by the reaction. Um, some of the abuse they received during the game and the reaction when Ireland won the game at the end. I know there was a lot of booing when Johnny Sexton was taking penalties. I wouldn't put much heat in that. That's just, that happens all over the world. Um, but I think a little bit of nastiness from a, a minority, I would say. Um, and there's some of the old, there's older people on the trip here, and, and and older supporters. Some of the parents were were abused, and a few times Stuart had to come in and remove people. Really? Who j- just a very, a very yeah, very mi- minority group, I'd say. Um, they just, I suppose, got a little bit nasty, had too much drink on board, stuff like that. But there was definitely a few incidents where. Some of the Irish uh, supporters weren't uh, were a little bit shocked about what was happening around them. Uh, but again, I've loads of great friends in New Zealand. I've lo- um, the welcome we've got since the start here has been fantastic. So I don't want to tarnish New Zealand or or their supporters, but there's certainly a minority who probably think, well, you've no right to win here, and uh, they they just didn't behave too well on Saturday night. And again. A small minority, so I don't want to kind of go too hard on that. But there was definitely a bit of nastiness there around from the crowd on Saturday night. Okay. My understanding was like the Kiwi Irish relationship would have been very good. It is, I think. But I think, look, there's some. It's like everywhere. I I don't know. I just I just thought, well, when New Zealand play in Dublin, I think they're very well respected and welcomed, and there's it doesn't really happen. But look, again, it's a minority because I don't want to make a big thing out of it, but I just thought I was a bit shocked by some of the uh, the supporters who came back to the same hotel that I was in. They were kind of a little bit... Um, there was definitely one or two incidents where the stewards had to come in and remove people from... They were quite abusive and nasty, and there was a lot of uh, vocabulary, not so nice, um, vocabulary being used around. And like some of that abuse was being directly aimed at the fans. It wasn't kind of going out in the field to the referee or right. or anything. It was being aimed at, Ze- at Irish fans, which was a bit upsetting because some of them, as I said, were parents. Um, it's not a big thing. You know, the welcome we've got in New Zealand here has is, is been fantastic, but they don't like getting beaten, really. And I think um, a small minority reacted nastily on Saturday night. Um, Peter Manny had one of the games of his life uh, and also is going to be um, you know, celebrated for the uh, interaction with uh, Sam Kane. Who do you think you are? You're a shit Richie McCall, pal. <laughs> this might be the last act of his tour, though, because there's an injury doubt about him. What, what do you think? Is he is he likely to be able to play uh, next week, or is he gone, do you think? I don't know. I think he he, pa- he had a HIA, and that's when he went off for it. Um, he uh, passed the first HIA, that's all I know. Um, so he's to do another one, either probably tomorrow, um, I think they'll want him to play for sure. He's been brilliant, and not just this year. I think he said, and not just this this tour. I think, to be fair, you know, I've worked on a lot of games this year that he's he's done, and Munster have had a 
you know, a difficult end to the season and uh, some highs and lows throughout the year. Uh, probably more disappointments, but certainly a few high points. And I think one thing that I've said right at the end of this, right throughout the season is he's found form this year and, and a real spark to his game and, and an energy. Um, maybe it's an all, you know, when you get a bit older, he probably previous year he was under a bit of pressure. He was didn't get picked in November. He was not on the bench. He's now fought back and got his Irish place, and I think he's he's been fantastic. And uh, it was an immense performance from him on Saturday night. And and but you know I took Doris. You asked me about killing Doris last week in the first test, and and it was a fair question. And he had a quiet game in that first test in 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 uh, Dunedin in, in Eden Park. He was brilliant. Josh van der Fleer just continues to get better and better and, and the consistency in his performance. So I thought it was really crucial that the, the the three of them in the back row worked incredibly hard together as a unit, uh, making tackles, making carries, slowing the ball down, turnovers. You, can't, you couldn't pick out any Irish player that had a bad game. They all had brilliant games and they'll need to do the same this week. Ty Byrne, you know, he wasn't playing since November. Uh, or since the end of the Six Nations um, t- started last week and this week he had some brilliant carries as well I thought James Ryan was brilliant as well um, he, he got pinged and yellow carded but he was throwing himself about as well and the front row were you know, so much better scrum and line out Andrew Porter scoring two tries uh, phenomenal so you know, for the backs to operate, and and um, I was asked this about Johnny Sexton as well after the game. His his performance was brilliant, but his forward pack um, were superb on Saturday night, and they allowed Ireland to attack and and um, launch different attack plays after set piece, and they put so much pressure on that New Zealand backline. He's he's thirty seven today, I think. Sexton is he? I think today's his birthday. Like yeah, it's wait, today. Yeah, it's today. Just from your perspective, like I, I'm not, I'm not bit massive into rugby. Where, wh- how, how much of an outlier is it to be able to perform at this level? And where does he stand in terms of Irish sporting greats to to be so vital to a team at 37 and to be like obviously one of the greatest out halves that we've had? Like, is he just is he just continuing to kind of break the mold in terms of what he's doing? Yeah, he continues to keep setting the bar higher and higher. I think. Um, his leadership qualities, um, he's probably been questioned a lot in the last couple of years. Um, would he continue? Would he, should he be picked? Should he be, and, and rightly so, because eventually he's, he's going to finish after the World Cup. And we've got uh, somebody else is going to step up and we, we, we've we probably um, lacked a, a lot of depth in that position the last number of years. Um He's just been phenomenal. I think he's mental strength and he keeps kind of um, getting better and better. And um, I, w- I was asked this question today at, at, uh, by a journalist. Um, what, why is he getting better? And he just looks so such a threat with the ball in his hand. I just think he challenges himself continuously to be better. That sounds quite simplistic, but he puts pressure on coaches to give loads of detail Um and he just wants to get better and better all the time. I know every player goes out and wants to be better and play at the top of their game, but I just think he's continually trying to to improve his game. And he's at a level where he's very mentally strong. He's had plenty of setbacks. but And you can think the, cha- the challenge here, Johnny, for any rugby player, you said it at the start, Jerry, you know, Paul O'Connell never won here, uh, never beat him home or away. Brian O'Driscoll did, and lots of great Irish players even before that. Um it's just kind of a given now that they have this self-belief and, and it's driven by a lot by him as well. He's very mentally strong. So, you know, 37 years of age uh, to be doing what he's doing is, um, is, is incredible, really. Yeah, it's, it's, um, I, I, there aren't that many, I don't, I, maybe like, is it Ruby Walsh? Are there the other people that you would be kind of comparing him to? Jockey the going to his, his for, like, but whereas the late stage where Ruby was still, yeah, better. and he, he was, Ruby, Ruby was broken up, but like, Sexton at that level of rugby, just that seems a complete outlier to me. Um, at that age, we doing what he's doing. Is it, is it, is it the, the confidence he inculcates in others by just being there that lifts everyone. Well, that that's definitely an aspect of it. That's that's it, like, and that's not just confidence uh, that they get from him. It's like instruction. It's like mm. you know, it, it, his rugby brain is is uh, very impressive, um, which is allowing his, his body just, to catch just up. Just on that, Joe, like 
you know, taking the decision to go for the scrum when the, when they got the, the yellow card with, with Tunga Fassi, like, you talk about a rugby brain, some people would just kick that into the corner. Now, Ireland messed up the, the subsequent attack off that scrum, but he, he's immediately, mm. he knows the laws inside out. He's probably thinking two steps ahead where he's going to attack. I think he's such a brilliant reader of the game. That that makes his attack really, that makes his game um, so good that he's he's thinking about the game all the time. And just, you know, so to take that decision, I remember going, wow, that's, that's some call. I wouldn't have thought of it, you know, when you're watching the game or you're, you're doing the commentary, you're thinking, geez, oh, I, I didn't think of that. He's thinking straight away, they've got to bring eight into the scrum. So two of their back line have got to come into that scrum. Mm. And he's thinking of that really, really quickly. Now, I know we, the Ireland stuffed up the attack. James um, Lowe dropped the ball. I thought it was the wrong decision to try and move it up wide there. They should have just punched it up for a, for a phase or two. But anyway, that you know, he, he probably... He sees the game uh, a couple of phases ahead, and that that yeah, you know that helps him, and and he's able to kind of bring people around him with him. That all led to the uh, situation with who's coming off the fifteen men back in the field, where it was like, hang on a second. I mean, the All Blacks really get refereed differently, but are they allowed to bring a man back after they've had a man sent off? I'm not. Uh, that did speak to um, a team which is a bit of a shambles at the moment. What's the outcry been like from the New Zealand media? What are you seeing there that is like a response to this? Because it's going to be really interesting to see how they respond. There's a possibility that we drive a dagger into them this week and it's a full-blown coaching ticket, fired, Joe Schmidt, new coach. Like everything is on the, on the cards this week and that's why all of a sudden this game matters a whole heap. But what's it been like down there? Um, very negative towards what, what, what the results of the weekend. I think uh, I think they're, the New Zealand public and press are kind of holding their powder a little bit um, because if it goes, if they respond and bounce back, I think they do realise, Jared, that, uh, and and maybe they weren't patronising us before the tour, saying that Ireland are a very good side and they're a dangerous proposition. Aaron Smith said before the tour, I said this to you, I think, he said the week the week of the first test, it doesn't get any bigger than Ireland. Um, probably a little bit far-fetched, to be honest, but um, I do think they have... Um, Ireland have earned um, their respect uh, in the last number of years and uh, earned it enough that they're very wary of Ireland. Um, Saturday night kind of brings it to a new level that Ireland have now won here. Yeah. Um, so I, I think there'll be a little bit of patience. It won't go crazy. It hasn't gone crazy. There's been a lot of criticism, of course. Yeah. There's but been lots lose. of calls for changes. Yeah. But if they lose this wing, I think it'll go to that level that All you're right. talking about. One, one quick word. The um, team has been named for the, the test tomorrow night. Uh, Jeremy Lukeman, Niall Scannell, Tom O'Toole at the front row. Joe McCarthy and Kieran Treadwell are in the second row. Keen Prendergast, Nick Timoney and Gavin Coombs are the back row. It's Craig Casey and Kieran Frawley again at 9 and 10. Stuart McCluskey and Keith Earls, who captains the team from 13. And the wings are Jimmy O'Brien, Jordan Larmer and Michael Lowry. Uh, look, it's a really exciting team. If they can get some ball, they might be able to do some damage. But we did see what the New Zealand Mary team did the first time out to Ireland. So, like, I don't know. D- does this matter in any way for the weekend? Or is this just about getting... I getting think it does. Base? Right. No, it does. It'll... it'll... It'll create a great feel-good factor if, if Ireland were to turn that result around from the first day. Um, the Maori All Blacks had nine debutants. That first night, they were brilliant. Uh, they won 30, It was a 32-17, but it was pretty dominant performance. Um, I, I think um, the Irish side, you know, for players who haven't been involved in the test matches, there's a lot of them there. They have something to play for here, which is um, really big for them. Um, and you know Andy Farrell will want them to step up and, and front up. I think they've the concern and the challenge is that, and I think that's what I was saying to you um, Saturday night. Straight away there was talk of the Maori game. It's that's what's next. It's not the it's not the next Test match. It's the Maori game, and we've got to help and support them. Johnny Sexton said, "I thought that was brilliant because if I was one of the players playing for for Ireland tomorrow night, I would think, yeah, that's great. Now the team have just beat New Zealand, but." They're all behind us now, and they're and we're going to get the focus and the attention that we need to try and get a performance. Um, you know, you'll find out a lot about the players. Can they respond? Can they get a 
you know, sort out the issues they had. They kicked loosely in that game. The kick chase was poor and they got punished severely. Yeah. They have to really step up. The problem we have, Jar, is there's six on the bench that are going to have to double up uh, this week. And that's going to be a real challenge is um, for them to do that because it kind of it, 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 it's not ideal preparation. Um, but no. I don't think Ireland will be training a lot this week. There'll certainly be no physical kind of stuff. The test team um, no, you're right. But I, having to double yeah. up, double up twice is is tough going for some of the players. Yeah. Okay, we'll we we'll leave it there for now. Alan, talk to you again later on in the week. Thanks a million. Cheers. Cheers, lads.